One group of valiant warriors and revolutionaries of our most recent history were those untold number of ordinary citizens who fought on the front lines of the civil rights movement of the 50s and 60s. Tired of the prejudicial and Jim Crow restrictions prevalent in American society, these soldiers for justice carried on a battle began by their forebears and one that continues on to this day. They're always searching for better solutions and have serious concerns about the welfare of their fellow man. Black scientists positions have these altruistic virtues in common. Not only did they practice or perfect existing methods, but sometimes discovered newer techniques that created major advancements in their respective fields. Always in a quest to better the human condition, these champions devoted their lives to many worthwhile efforts. The greatest bequests, however, or quite possibly, were the opportunities they made possible for others of their race who followed in their footsteps. Putting down a cholera epidemic in Pittsburgh, Dr. Martin R. Delaney, a Harvard-trained physician, was an active member of the American Colonization Society Back to Africa movement. When Dr. Delaney traveled to Africa, he met with several kings to establish a treaty to induce U.S. blacks to immigrate. Dr. George Cleveland Hall, who specialized in surgery, opened Providence Hospital so that black surgeons would have an opportunity to practice their skills in Chicago. Dr. Hall's partner, Dr. Daniel Hill Williams, was a pioneer in open heart surgery and the first to perform it successfully. An international leader in transplant surgery, Dr. Samuel L. Koontz performed over 500 kidney operations, the most of that day and time. Chemist Dr. Percy L. Julian was best known for his research and developments in soybean products, hormone preparations, and other pharmaceuticals. Prior to forming Junior Laboratories, his own company, he taught at Howard University, where he headed the chemistry department. Biologist Ernest E. Just utilized his highly intelligent mind to formulate new concepts about cell life. Just made pioneering investigations into egg fertilization and artificial insemination. Dermatologist and philanthropist in the Chicago Black District Theodore Lawless attended to an average of 100 patients a day, both black and white. He used his skills also in contributing to the treatment of leprosy and syphilis. Dr. George Carruthers, shown on the right, was a scientist that developed the lunar camera that took photographs of the moon for the United States space program. Dr. Charles Drew became the first director of the American Red Cross Blood Bank. Drew was the leading authority on blood plasma and advanced its applications. A doctor who became well known for his pioneering work in the field of scientific study of race was Dr. James McCoon Smith. He was also very active in the abolitionist movement. Catherine Katie Ferguson's work with destitute children began in her Sunday school and it gave rise to a movement. The first in New York to find homes for orphaned children. Her own mother had been sold when Katie was young, which made her compassionate toward all orphans. Claire Brown was believed to be the first black resident of Colorado during the gold rush days. She opened the first laundry in the territory and relocated her family there with her earnings by buying them away from their white masters. Black Red Cross nurses were actively involved in saving servicemen's lives during World War I. Dr. Justina Ford arrived in Denver, Colorado in 1902, having just graduated from medical college back in Chicago. Dr. Ford established a long and successful practice, specializing in gynecology and pediatrics. For several years, she was denied hospital privileges and had to practice home deliveries. Known as the Lady Doctor, Ford delivered more than 7,000 babies 
for people of many different backgrounds. Activist William Steele was one of 18 children born to an ex-slave father and fugitive slave mother. Steele became the conductor of the Underground Railroad and helped hundreds of slaves escape. He established an orphanage for children and a division of the YMCA for Blacks. Another individual involved in expanding the YMCA Black division was Jesse M. Childs. Childs, a world traveler, was very influential and successful in producing fundraising for Black YMCA. Child settled in Cincinnati with his family and was recognized as an ambassador of goodwill to a global community. One reason that black organizers gravitated towards organizations such as the YMCA had much to do with their goals and programs, including the elimination of racism, promotion of physical and mental health, world peace, family life, and spiritual values. Multiracial YMC agencies, such as the USO, were instrumental in providing assistance to military personnel throughout the world. Contrary to common belief, breakthroughs in business have always been synonymous with black heritage from ancient time to modern day. Here in the United States of America, even with its depth of repression and discrimination in the marketplace, with laws for decades forbidding blacks to obtain patents, the spirit of inventiveness in commerce cannot be squelched. Not surprisingly, the vast number of successful business people and inventors has never been fully acknowledged. In 1848, a blacksmith, Lewis Temple, invented a toggle harpoon, also known as Temple's toggle, which became a standard tool in the whaling industry. Businessman John Merrick was co-founder of the North Carolina Mutual Life Insurance Company. From its meager beginnings, the company grew into one of the largest and most successful insurance enterprises owned by blacks. New Bedford, Massachusetts native Paul Cuffey was a wealthy shipbuilder and businessman who provided large sums of money to colonization efforts of American blacks wanting to return to Africa. John H. Murphy founded and published the Baltimore Afro-American newspaper, which developed into the largest black press in the United States. The Nicodemus Colony was founded by the Exodusters, a group of black homesteaders active in Kansas around the 1870s. The settlers were plagued by crop failures, but managed to create a real community of teachers, ministers, and civil servants.